The 2019 remake of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening kind of came out of nowhere, but it was a great surprise to many Zelda fans like myself. Today, that is what we are going to be reviewing. So I got this game a couple of weeks ago and I've been gradually playing through it and I'm now done. I didn't 100% the game, as certain aspects are really stupid to finish, but I did lots of the post-game stuff anyways. Uh, and getting into the actual review, I must say that this game is pretty much everything I expected it to be. I was expecting a pretty fun, classic Zelda game, and that's what I got, which I have no problem with. Link's Awakening is definitely one of the Zelda games that needed a remake, seeing as the original did not age well. While the original was never one of my favorite Zelda games, this remake definitely made me appreciate it a lot more. For those wondering, I previously ranked the original as a low B tier on my Zelda game tier list, but I would for sure put the remake at a high B tier or maybe even a low A tier. A slight spoiler warning because I won't go out and say what happens in the end, even though it's a very old game, but I might make a joke or two about it. For those who don't know the story, it can pretty much be summed up by saying, you crash your boat on an island and want to wake the wind fish at the top of the island with eight magical instruments for no apparent reason. Now into the different topics of the review. First off, the music in this game is really great. Hearing all the classic music done, no offense, a lot better was really a wonderful feeling. While most songs are just small jingles, the big hits like the overworld themes really stood out as great tunes. As for gameplay, I would say it was decent. Basic, but decent. Items kind of got slightly annoying by the end when you have tons of them, as you usually want to be able to jump, but then you constantly have to be switching your other items, although it is nice that shield and dash have their own buttons. Ahem, <coughs> minish cap. For me, the game constantly ran very well, and I honestly can't remember any moments where I noticed delay or lag. After seeing the initial release trailer, I must say I was skeptical in the design of the game, but in the end I think it really worked for this game. The toy-like look fits with the light-hearted game this is, and yes, this game is light-hearted. Just don't think about what happens when you beat it. Anyways, I like the look of all the townspeople, enemies, and such. My one complaint is that the overworld sometimes looks a little odd. Like in the desert when the skulls on the ground are all the same. It's just a little weird. I appreciate that they wanted to stay true to the original, but would it really be that hard to just put two or three skull designs in? One complaint that I see most people having about the game is how short it is. Initially, I also complained about the steep price and only 20 hours of gameplay at the most, but in the end, I really didn't mind. Obviously, I still believe the price should have been lowered, but it was a very sweet experience, even for how short it was. And pretty much everyone who I saw complaining about this was fine with Luigi's Mansion 3 being only like 15 hours, but I don't know. As I mentioned, Link's Awakening has its fair share of collectibles. Like most Zelda games, you have your heart pieces, if you call those collectibles, and you also have the secret seashells. There's a total of 50 hidden around Covalent Island. Uh, those looking to completely beat the game should get them all, but if you just want to get them for the sake of it, I really wouldn't advise it. Getting up to 40 gives you a great reward, but the reward for getting all 50 just kinda sucks. And getting the last few is really painful. The heart pieces and the amount you get really depend on how good you are and if you can manage with a low amount of health or not. These are pretty much the only collectibles, but there's a few hidden items around the world that you can only get by doing sort of side quests. Another thing I must praise the game for is the cutscenes, and mainly the ending. While the main gimmick of the end was talked about a lot throughout the game, the ending cutscene was really nice, and it uh, sort of made me want a Zelda anime. Anyways, there is a secret ending, and I must recommend to not get it. To get it, you have to beat the game with zero deaths, which honestly isn't too bad, but it could be a challenge for first time players. 
The secret ending is very, very similar to the normal one, with only one small difference. It is really nice, but not worth it in my opinion. Really, one of the only main problems with this game is how it could have used a slight bit of tweaking and modernization. A main problem with going back to older games that you haven't ever played is that many just don't tell you what to do. In between dungeons, you get a very vague hint of where to go, but that's really not that bad. You usually figure out where that is pretty quickly if you've explored the world. But the really annoying part is the trading sequences. Basically, you go around and give one thing to one guy, and he gives you something that you give to another guy, and so on until you get the item you need. Sometimes finding the right person to give stuff to would take a very long time of just looking around doing nothing. Not fun. In the end, Link's Awakening will forever be a timeless classic Zelda game, and this remake only makes it even more memorable. I really enjoyed this game and would love to see some other 2D Zelda games remade just like it. I would give The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening an A-. As a side note, Breath of the Wild is now an A. Thanks to everyone for watching, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all later. Bye.